Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel, The Budgeting Biologist. My name is Brittany. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping on this a little old video. If you're oldie, but a goodie, thank you so much as always for coming back. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on my May budget. So if you're interested in that type of content, please consider giving this video a like, comment, and of course, subscribing to the channel. Your girl would appreciate it. Now let's hop into the video. So hi, hello. I hope you are doing well and staying safe no matter whenever or wherever you may be watching this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Brittany. I am a zero-based budgeter based in the Washington DC area. And on this channel, I am sharing my journey to stay debt-free and remain in control of my finances. So like I just mentioned, I am a zero-based budgeter, which means every single dollar in my budget has a place. And I can't believe it. I know I say this every month, but somehow it's already May and we gotta work on our May zero-based budget. So grab your budgeting materials if you would like to budget along with me and now let's hop into it. So I always get a lot of questions on where I get these sheets from. I just make these in Canva and I've said forever that I wanna make them available as well as like the digital version that I use through my Google Sheets to track my finances. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, y'all, just to be totally honest with you. And that is something I need to work on um, hopefully in May before things get crazy this summer. But anyways, um, so this is what I use to do my budgeting. It's super cute, love it for May. Tulips are my favorite flower, so absolutely love this for May. But let's go ahead and hop into it and we are gonna start off with income. So I am a salary-based employee at both of my jobs. I am a uh, teach at a local community college and then I have my main job. And again, I'm a salary employee at both, so my income doesn't really change month to month. I do have a couple of updates, y'all. So the first update is that I did get a promotion at my main job. I'm going from being a contractor to a permanent employee. So I get a new job title, I get a raise, that is gonna happen in August. And then second, I'm gonna get my normal raise in June. So like the standard raise that everybody gets. So very excited about both of those. But for right now, this is what we're working with for May. So I'm expecting four total paychecks. I'm gonna get 160 from each one of my teaching paychecks and then 2,365 from my main job for a total of $5,050 that we are gonna be budgeting for May. So now moving on to savings and investing, um, there are lots of different ways to do your budget, but I kind of like to pay myself first and then live off of everything else. Very grateful that I'm able to do that. And um, that may change a little bit uh, because I just got engaged y'all. And we are in the midst of wedding planning and figuring out if we're gonna have a big wedding, small wedding, you know, all, all that good stuff. So depending on how that goes, this, this category is probably gonna change the most over the next couple months. But for right now, I'm gonna be putting $1,000 into my personal savings. No matter what, I'm gonna be maxing out my Roth IRA. I'm gonna put 583 into that. Now investing is gonna be getting a lot more money this month at 555. And then house, which is a joint savings account that I have with my partner. And um, ideally this account is gonna pay for like things around the house. Like eventually we're gonna need a new roof. And you know, ideally we will pay for that money directly out of that savings account. So that is what we're gonna be putting aside for savings and investing. And if I add that up, we have a thousand plus 583 plus 555 plus 100 gives us a grand total of $2,238 that we're gonna be putting towards saving and investing. And if I divide that by the total amount of money I'm budgeted to get paid and multiply that by 100, I'm setting aside about 44% of my total income towards savings and investing. So now moving on to the fixed expenses. Of course, these do change from month to month to month. Um, I do know my mortgage is going up in the month of May. I think more money is going into my escrow. So I'm gonna set aside $1,560 for my mortgage, my portion of our mortgage. Water is gonna stay at 50. Netflix is gonna stay at 17. Electric, we're gonna keep at 100. Internet is gonna be 60. 
and then cell phone, which is a bill that I pay on my own. And actually, I'm going to highlight the bills that um, that um, I pay. Um, actually, I'll highlight the bills that I share with my partner, which is mortgage, water, electric, and internet, and groceries too. And then um, the rest of these I pay for on my own. But anyways, a cell phone, I'm going to budget 38 and then Apple, which is my Apple Music student and my iCloud storage, I'm gonna do $8 for that. So let's go ahead and add up what we're putting towards our fixed expenses. We have 1,560 plus 50 plus 17 plus 100 plus 60 plus 38 plus eight. It gives us a grand total of $1,833 that we are putting toward fixed expenses. And let me just add that up one more time just to be sure. So I added it up just to be sure. And yep, we are putting $1,833 towards our fixed expenses. And if we divide that, but again, by what I'm in total uh, budgeting to get paid, multiply that times 100 means we are putting 36%, I guess 36.3% of our total income towards fixed expenses. Now the last category we have to take care of are my discretionary expenses. Of course, these can change month to month to month. So the first one is groceries and groceries is a joint expense between me and my partner. And for right now, we're planning on keeping things like we do have them right now in terms of our finances. So how we do it for us is of course we have the joint account for the savings, but we have a joint checking account and my partner and I, my fiance and I put in a set amount of money into that every month that covers all of these joint expenses, mortgage, water, electric, internet, and groceries. Now, when we get married and like we combine car insurance and possibly cell phone, things like that, we'll have to readjust that amount. But for right now, we're gonna keep it the same. I'm gonna get all of our bills, including groceries, gets paid out of that joint account. But anyways, we're gonna be doing um, $240 for groceries, $120 for gas. I am going up a little bit on gas because I've been doing a lot more driving, driving to venues and things like that. Hopefully it'll settle down once we actually decide on a venue. But for right now, I'm gonna do 120 for gas. I think I did 100 last month. Beauty is gonna get 40. Shopping is going to get 100. Fun is gonna get 154. And this month for fun, at the end of the month, like during Memorial Day weekend, um, we're going to King's Dominion with some of our friends. So this money is basically just gonna be to pay for anything we get at King's Dominion. We already got the tickets and all that, but this is basically just fun money for when we are at the park. Giving is gonna stay at 50. And then eating out, we're gonna keep at 60. I always get, get a lot of comments on why my eating out is so low. And the bottom line is that, you know, we just really don't eat out, me especially. Um, very occasionally I eat out, typically on Saturdays. So um, yeah, that's just what's always worked for me. Car is gonna get 20. Um, I did just get an oil change not too long ago, so I should be good for car. Now clothes is gonna get 75 because I do need some new clothes for summer. And then health is going to get 25 because I do anticipate having a copay from a doctor. Um, that bill should be coming in May and that is gonna be 25. Pet, which is anything I get for my dog tie in is gonna get 15. And then I'm gonna set aside 80 for my hair vitamins um, that I take every month. So now let's go ahead and add up how much we're putting aside for discretionary expenses. So in total for our discretionary expenses, we are setting aside $979 total. And again, if I divide that by what I'm planning on budgeting uh, to get paid and then multiply that times 100, I'm putting about 19.4% 
of my income towards my discretionary expenses. Okay, so last part of my very simple budgeting. And um, I do wanna make note of, one thing you probably didn't see on here is debt. And I'm very blessed to be totally debt free. And um, I'm trying to keep it that way as long as possible. In fact, for this wedding, the goal is that me and my fiance, we've already decided no matter what we do, we are not going into debt over a wedding. If we can't afford to pay for it in cash, that means we don't need it that badly. So yeah, I am planning on staying debt free no matter what we ultimately decide to do. But again, for income, I am budgeting to get paid $5,050. For savings, we are planning on budgeting $2,238. And in total for my expenses, I am budgeting $2,812. And that's both my fixed and discretionary expenses added up. So let's just do the quick math to make sure we have a full zero base budget. So we have 5,050 minus 2,238. That leaves us with 2,812 minus 2,812 bringing us to a nice, clean, zero-based budget. Okay, y'all, so that is gonna go ahead and end this very simple zero-based budget. If you did enjoy it, please consider giving this video a like, commenting, and subscribing. I wanna hear your plans going into May. It's gonna be summer here in the US. I'm really excited. So many fun things planned this summer. Um, and I wanna hear you know, what you're excited about for May and the summertime. So um, that is gonna end my video and I'm gonna see y'all in my next one. Bye.